fees represents was not properly comprehended. Executors, remembering in their system, they are claiming to be executives in various roles. But in the statutes of the various corporations, the fees that executives are permitted to, to charge as compensation for their time and effort is mandated. That is, that if you go to a various state, you will find that the words uh, compensation schedule of fees for executives should be something on the books in pretty much every single state. That is, they recognise the validity of an executor being able to have compensation for their time. And what's important also is that your schedule of fees truly represent a value appropriate. A, an executor does not charge a million dollars an hour. I mean, this is an outrageous claim and could not be justified. So if one was to write a schedule of fees where they charged a million dollars an hour, then you've pretty much destroyed any credibility you have. Similarly, an executor doesn't charge $10 an hour. So it's up to you to determine your value of your time within reason. If you've heard people talk about, charge them whatever you like, please think of this. A general executor does not act in such a disgraceful manner. A general executor of the estate will charge an appropriate amount for their time. And if you're worried about an amount being uh, too low, think about this. Under their system, they have interest, do they not? This is one of the tools of the IRS. There is nothing preventing you from saying that if a debt is not paid, that it will be charged at compound interest. Thus, you can charge reasonable amounts, amounts that can be comprehended, that if it's not paid over time will amount to quite a substantial amount, but because they have refused to be honourable. I hope that answers that question. Well, let me go to, uh, to Ron, and then we'll keep going through the calls. I've got to go probably about another 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll have to wrap up tonight. Ron, can you hear us? Hi, Frank. Hey, Hello, guys. Frank. You there? Yeah. Yes, okay. I am. Hey, I, just a quick uh, mention about on the U of U, there's the download section for books and information. Um, there's a new category there called Eucadia Books. And inside the Eucadia book list is uh, the journey of self, the journey to UCA, um, stuff like that. Um, the law books that, like Roman Court Procedure, Cause Law, they'll all end up under the law category. Roman Court Procedure is in two areas, so it, it's easier to find. Now, <clears throat> getting back to... You know, we've talked about I, I need to rebut the indictment, right? Yep. So I went through, I, I basically countered all their presumptions uh, of the indictment. But then I thought, you know, then we got into the recognition. And I thought, you know, this would be a really good place to put, I do not recognize blah, 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 right? Yes. Do you think that's appropriate to put in that notice? Absolutely. I mean, what we've found with agent, an agency is that agency is something that uh, that is uh, a fundamental presumption that they are using. It's one that is within their realm of comprehension. I mean, right. a, a judge may not know where his robes come from. A judge may not even believe that, that a, a person is a fiction. They may think it's one and the same thing. But when it comes to an agent, the role of an agent, it appears that judges and, and indeed m most of the senior bar people fully appreciate that it is a presumption that uh, if it's rebutted, they, they can't claim. Right. Now, what I did was I'm, I'm trying to think of how to separate myself from, from the octopus, right? And there's multiple tenets or tentacles. Yep binding us right so i just basically started at the president and i worked down to the uh to the janitor for i do not recognize whatever their authority or whoever they are you know did i go well, i haven't filed it but do you think i went overboard or 
Well, I, the, 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 one <laughs> thing that we yeah, that's a, always a tough question, right? Um, the 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 thing I'd say, and what we can do is we can take a bit more of this conversation offline. Right. But if I just answer this for the moment, and then we'll, if you don't mind, I'll keep going through those waiting to to speak. Um, is that we have a habit. There is a habit, unfortunately, that we try and throw everything and the kitchen sink in one document, yes? Mm-hmm. And I do believe that there is a lot to be garnered from precise step-by-step um, completion. So in your case, the, one of the key steps you needed to do was disengage the presumption that you had appointed a uh, court-appointed attorney as your agent, which therefore uh, put a, effectively a, a, a disruptor that would could countermand anything you put in by simply saying, I am the power of attorney on this matter. Yes? Right. Now, now as you have removed that obstacle, I would tread very, very carefully in procedural steps heading towards the... Um, towards the uh, trial, yeah? Mm-hmm. Now, work on the presumption <clears throat> that the trial is, is unavoidable. Just work on that presumption to start with. What would be the next key thing that you would need to remove? And work through that basis, yeah? Right. Well, and, uh, it's the indictment. Right, the indictment, isn't it? Yep. So let's work on the indictment as the, as the next key thing. And, and every element of the indictment can justifiably be rebutted in one document. Okay? Okay. All right, Ron, and I'll talk to you later on. Okay, bye. Thanks, Ron. Okay, uh, let, me, um, let me go to the next call-up and we'll wrap up in a moment. But thanks for every question and every comment that's been made tonight. Hello, Lynn, can you hear us? Ah, uh, yes, I can. Hi, Frank. I I had a couple of conversations with different people today, and what really struck me was the fact that um, they know about the executor paperwork, and for various reasons, have not completed it or have not delved into it enough to wear the ex- general executor mantle. Um, knowingly and fully. And so in the absence of doing that, then you start having to muddle around like, okay, what are you going to put in now? Well, then you get into, um, say, an affidavit of negative averment or whatever. But what I wanted to say is none of that is going to be as effective as putting on the mantle of the general executor and knowing who and what you are in that role. And Great. until until people do that, and you've said it over and over, there is not a magic bullet with paperwork. The magic bullet is you standing in what you know. And at this point, I'm going to say, if you're dancing around with the court for any reason, I, if it were me, I would think, I was crazy not to be following the whole inf- batch of information on the general executor. It's a very good point, Lynn, and I really appreciate you raising it. Again, we're, we're wrapping up in a moment, so I'm, I'm mindful my answers can can be uh, <laughs> overbearing. <laughs> but look, tonight we spent a bit more time talking about specifics, and we were talking with a bit more emphasis towards remedy. Some I could answer, some I I wasn't able to answer, but the premise still stands that if you read the material on Eucadia, if you read the covenant, and so you know the the covenant fulfillment of your relationship between the divine and you, and that no one stands between you and the divine, if you read the canons of positive law, of, of all the laws in fact, and know exactly the principles of what is law, what is the the transition of law from the creator down, so you're under no illusion or confusion, 
And if you stand with respect and honour in the shoes uh, that were given to you by the divine as general executor over your own estate, over your own mind, your own body, your own spirit, then absolutely you will become a formidable adversary and you will know how to behave and, and everything else will fall into place. But this is a learning thing for all of us, as you know, Lynn, isn't it? Absolutely. And I appreciate the information tonight about the recognize. Um, I, I think that's very powerful. Um, we're always looking for if that judge would open his robe and he had a label hanging under his, around his <laughs> neck, what would the sign say? And it's probably the sign that says agent. And yeah, exactly you know, right. I'm grateful that 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 has come out because yeah. we've we've tried many many things, and um, if if that's what it boils down to, then by all means, you know, let's go for that. And like you said, if you know who you are, and if you've studied and you understand, then then you're going to be able to use that and and not be tricked out of it. Exactly, exactly. And that's one of the other things. Why there's such an emphasis on knowledge is just having a solution without the knowledge means if you are challenged, and let me tell you, they are challenging. You are challenged and can't respond, then they will crush you. And that is happening every single day, isn't it, Lynn? Absolutely, absolutely. So... um and, and I think even at the point when when I was in a situation where I didn't have all the knowledge, but I knew who I was and I knew what I wasn't willing to accept, that, and, and I was willing to sit there month after month, they, they knew I wasn't going to budge. Yep. And, and, and that you become more formidable even though maybe I only said one or two sentences a month at a hearing. But, um, you know, finally it's like, you know, we want to kind of clear this one out of the way. <laughs> so, well, but I just want to I, thank I wanna, you. I, oh, no, look, I want to thank you, Lynn, and, and, and sorry we've got to wrap up and we've gone over time, but I just want to say uh, on my behalf and I think on behalf of everyone, Lynn, um, I know that, that people have the utmost respect for you, for what you've gone through, but also for your contribution and for your willingness to, to assist and the fact that you call a spade a, a shovel. Lynn, thank you for everything you're doing. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Look, we're going to have to wrap up. I know that we've got Alpha there again uh, on, a, on, a, on a call. And Alpha, I will, I will unmute you in a moment, but we're going to have to wrap up because we are running over time. Look, um, uh, I, I hope there were a couple of, there was one question that was put in the chat about interest. Uh, interest and usury is prohibited within transactions within Eucadia. But there is no statute, there is no principle that says as a tool, it cannot be used back into the Roman system. Now that might be appearing to split hairs I, I'd simply say to you, when you are in a battle with ignorant people and there's only certain things that, that wake them up and one of them is the effect of compound interest, if that's something that will wake them up because they won't follow other things, then that would be silly to preclude that as a tool back into the Roman system. But the charge of interest in Eucadia, between Eucadian members in the public law of Eucadia, yes, it is It is. Uh, considered a criminal act. Look, I'm going to unmute Alpha and then we're going to wrap up. Uh, so just get uh, Alpha back on. Um, one sec. Hopefully you can get... There you go. Alpha 999. Hi. Hi, Frank. I just wanted to compliment you. This was a really, really good episode tonight. Yeah, you did a fine job tonight. Um, and I was going to mention uh, to Ray from East Pennsylvania that I emailed Ron my phone number if Ron could pass it on for me I'd appreciate it All right. and uh, right. once again thank you very much for a good uh, presentation no thank you okay thanks Evan. 
But look, um, thanks to everyone who uh, spoke tonight, everyone who typed 